everyone, it's Stephanie from Scrap and Create, and we are working on the companion project for Come One, Come All. And I'm going to be using the square tags in this album. Um, these are Graphic 45 uh, tag dies, and then I'm using the Graphic 45 tags. So right now we're going to do the inside front and back cover. And I'm using the 12 by 12 collection pack stripe. And you should have the same, roughly the same scraps that I do even if you built the tent. This is going to be a very simple uh, project because it's very hard to do complicated flaps with a 6x6 six six album. There's just not enough real estate. So we'll do some simple um, pockets and inserts and of course these tags are going to be some of the inserts. And I'm planning on using the, the whole pack. I'm planning on using six tags. So right now I'm going to use one in the front and in the back. And then um, there's four pocket pages. So between uh, each of the layouts, I'm going to probably use a, a tag. <clears throat> but I haven't defined that yet. And we definitely have these tags in stock, and we also have the dies if you guys are interested in purchasing those over at scrapandcreate.com. Okay. Okay, we're going to set these aside. We'll go ahead and start with um, this is from the 8x8 collection. This is just the flip side. So um, my pocket is going to be three inches deep and um, six and one eighth inches wide, uh, maybe. That's probably, nope, I'm gonna make it smaller. Let's see. Yeah, I need to make it smaller, otherwise it's gonna be in the hinge area. Looks like, I'm gonna take a sliver off each one of these. So um, the outside is six and a quarter by six and a quarter. So I'm just going to plan on doing six by six on the inside. Yeah, there we go. So that I've got plenty of room over here by the hinge. And this is just going to be a simple pocket with a tag insert. Oh, you know what? Normally I put the pocket down first. I don't know, I'm, I'm out of it. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, so for the pocket, it needs to be, and I'm gonna lift this real quick. It needs to be seven by three and a half, seven by three and a half. And the reason I'm lifting it is because I want it to go inside the pocket. I don't know what's the matter with me. So it's seven by three and a half. You're going to score a half inch on three sides to form your pocket. And they're just going to go on the bottom of the front and back covers. That was weird. I don't, I, I don't think I've ever done that. <laughs> Get ahead of myself, I guess. Okay, let me verify this. Yeah. So the finished pocket is um, six by three. Okay, all right, there we go. Now I'm gonna add, this is gonna go in like this. Nope, that's the, that's the pocket. <laughs> yeah, that's the pocket, this is the top. Okay, I've got some overlap, okay. I'm just picking up the other one because it's dry. <clears throat> By the time we get over here, it should be, the one I <clears throat> made a mistake on should be dry. <clears throat> okay, we're gonna tuck it inside the pocket. And if you're not new to the channel, you know why I do this. Except I need to trim it down a little bit more because it's not gonna fit. My goodness. Oh, 
Oh, I just made a mess on my trimmer. Okay, this should fit inside the pocket now. And then uh, when we have an insert, it just makes it slide into the pocket that much easier. There we go. burnish that and then this is going to be the pocket and I think I need to trim it down I was thinking this needed to be six and one eighth but that's too too tight Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, sorry about that, took a quick break. And then here's our tag that's gonna go in the pocket. So we're gonna do the same thing over here. So I need to double check my cuts, I'll be right back. Okay, let's get our pocket down. This is seven by three and a half, seven by three and a half. see if I've got this trimmed. That's actually the pocket. Let's see if this will slip into... I can insert this. Yep. Okay, I'm gonna get this with some ink on it again. Oh, I need to... I trimmed it, so gotta add some more ink. That's it. Looks like I need to take some of the, trim this down a little bit. Re Sorry about the running back and forth. I had to readjust everything once I made my pockets a little bit smaller. Looks good. Okay, and here's our beautiful tag. I'm hoping I can get some charms or something to lay in on the tag, something to bling them up a little bit. And I also hope that I'm gonna have enough um, paper to do the uh, flip side. But right now I'm just gonna focus on getting inside, outside, and pocket pages done before I um, decorate or further decorate any of the inserts. Okay, so that's very straightforward, right? So that's the inside front. And that cover, and when we get back, we'll start working on the outside. Hey everyone, it's Stephanie. We're going to continue working on the six and a quarter by six and a quarter album. We're gonna start on the cover. 
So I am going to use one regular size tag as the closure on this album. I want it to have a closure so that when it's inside the tent, it doesn't want to spring open and interfere with um, any of the uh, pockets that are on the inside. So my plan is to uh, wrap this around to the front. So this is going to be attached to the back. <clears throat> so let me tell you, again, this is a regular size tag. If you don't have a tag, just start with a rectangle piece of paper. This is five and three quarters uh, by three and seven eighths. So if you start with a rectangle, you'll want to score in the same places. And I scored, let's put it in the scoreboard this way. You're gonna score at one and a half and four. One and a half and four. This is gonna be attached to the back. And then this is going to cover uh, the gap, and then this is gonna to attach to the front with magnets. So I've already added these magnets, but we'll still need to locate these. So I'm gonna, <clears throat> I gotta think about what I wanna do here. So I'm trying to decide if I want this uh, piece of gold to be exposed, <clears throat> if I want the tag mounted on the outside or the inside, and then we're gonna wrap the spine with the polka dots. And that kind of seems like a lot. So the other option is to have it tucked under, like so, where you're just seeing a tiny bit of it. And then we've got this on the spine. So you know what? I think I'm going to um, install it so this is going to be exposed. And then I'll add some decorations around it to soften the edges. Uh, I'm using an 8x8 for this but any scrap of your yellow. It could be the 12 by 12 pattern as well. But I'm running short of that, and you maybe too. Okay, before it gets too dry, I'm gonna start bending it on the score lines because it's gonna scoot around a little bit and I want that to happen while the glue is still a little bit wet so it doesn't tear. <clears throat> okay, and also so that it doesn't scoot down past the grommet there. That looks good. Okay, so make sure it's right side up. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add this to the cover. <coughs> or to the back, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Sam? Leave your um, vaccine, take a picture of your vaccine card. Sorry, I was off camera and I was talking to my son. He had to go get his booster today. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, that's done. So uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to attach this. Okay, and then like I said, I'm going to put some stickers or something here to soften that. All right. You know what? I think I'm going to use tape and glue. <clears throat> Little bit of both. All right. This is my nice fat five eighths inch tape. I haven't mentioned it in this video yet, but I am using ink on the edges and it is Powder puff mahogany. Powder puff mahogany. <clears throat> I'm just going to eyeball this. It's going to be centered. This glue. 
glue is going to give me a little bit of time to work with. Gonna give that a second to dry and then we'll close this and locate our second set of magnets and then this is the next piece that's going to go in <clears throat> I'm actually going to put some weight on this and I'll be back in a minute when that's all dry okay guys um, it's my glues dried so I'm ready to locate my magnets on the cover so it should um, fold and give you an even distance between the front and the back based on the score lines that we placed might be off a little but it should be pretty darn close I'm using two magnets because uh, I really want this to stick closed when it's inside. Um, the tent. So there's one. I might need to put a little more tape on this one. Yeah, I'm gonna put a little sticky on the back side of it. So it will grab. There we go. Oh, I was pushing in the wrong place. No wonder. I was thinking the magnet was. <laughs> I know Nala, she's ready for her walk. Okay, now that we have these in place, I'm gonna burnish around them and then we're gonna uh, add our uh, designer paper. Which is this. Okay, keep checking to make sure that you have everything in the right orientation. There's our pockets. It's easy, if you leave your tags in it, it's easy to tell which way is up. <clears throat> so I can see both the top and bottom. Lovely. And there we go. Okay, and I definitely recommend the two magnets. You're gonna need, I think, that much strength to keep it closed. Okay, and I place my magnets right here. All right, <clears throat> it's looking good. Now we're ready to start working with, let's get those corners down, the spine. So I put some score lines and I've bent it around the side to get uh, kind of a, a rough estimate of where I'm gonna need to trim it. So I'm gonna do that right now. <clears throat> Alright, now I'm just going to be really um, 
testing and trimming till I get this just where I want it. So I want there to be a little bit of a color block between this, uh, the blue paper and the red paper. And of course, when you go around a corner, it wants to pull back forward. So that's looking pretty good. Looks like I might be off about an eighth of an inch. So I am going to use some clips to hold it in place and we're going to check it out. And then we'll make our final cut. Oh, that one was tough. Okay, and I'm just wanting to hold that in place, wrap it around, and then get mark it for my final cut. And that looks pretty good. Shift it just a tiny bit. Okay, I'm get my pencil, I'm gonna mark it. I'm gonna trim it, and we're gonna test it one more time. If it's right, we're gonna get our tape on it and and stuff like <clears throat> And I'll tell you what it is when I'm done. <clears throat> okay. So I think, let me find my ruler. Yeah. What it's going to turn out to be is uh, each one of these panels is five inches, and I think this is going to be five and one eighth. But we're going to test it one more time. As soon as I get it right side up. <laughs> <There we go. clears throat> test it one more time, and then I'll give you my final measurement for the red piece. But again, I highly recommend that you test this because depending on where you laid your panel and how big your border is, your um, measurement may vary. It's a little off. about that okay so mine turned out to be five and one eighths so we're right there I'm gonna ink everything then we're gonna get tape on it remember because it's going on the spine we're gonna use tape not glue what's the rule of thumb if it's interactive use tape if it's static like these panels use glue okay ink that's what I'm looking for edges so I can kind of see the center here. I don't like that. That's my dog. She's ready for her walk. Okay, I'm going to put three wide strips and then I'm going to come back with my thinner tape. Um, Basically, the tape, if you have gaps in the tape, it's not solid, it allows the paper to stretch a little bit, which you want, um, as it's wrapping around the spine, and that should prevent, it should allow the paper to stretch a little rather than crack. What does that mean? Well, basically, when you're coming around a corner, 
all of this, there's a lot of stress on the outside, not on the inside, but on the outside. And um, if you put tape right here on the score lines, what happens is it doesn't allow, it now puts stress here and doesn't allow it to bend and stretch on the inside. So in addition to being stressed on the outside, it's now stressed on the inside. So this is gonna stay put, and then when you come around, this is gonna wanna crack, because it has. you have to have some relief somewhere. So you wanna give that to your paper on the inside by allowing, and that's why instead of using a solid piece, by allowing these seams, you're allowing for a little bit of that movement to occur. It's not a lot, but it does make a difference. I have tried solid pieces of tape, and um, the result was, uh, my spine cracked. And I heard this from another scrapbooker. Um, uh, when, when I first started doing these wrap spines, which I really like, I think they look really pretty. <clears throat> um, and I can't remember who it was. It was either Kathy Orta <laughs> or Rosa Kelly. It was one of the two of those, but it was a long time ago. So I really don't remember. I like to give credit where credit is due, but I, ugh. So it, it's one of the two of them that I heard that from, and um, she's got a video on it, and uh, she talks about essentially the same thing. So the other thing that's critical here, and because this is the area that's going to move the most, I want to have the most amount of seams. The other thing is critical is when you're wrapping your spine, you don't want it 100% open or 100% closed. So I have the front cover and back cover about 45 degrees from the spine. And then when you go to close it, it's only stretching, you know, that 45 degrees and not 90 degrees from a flat position, which is too much stress on the paper. All right. Let's see, yeah, I want this here. And then I've got a little bit of a gap. I'm going to see if I can get a, four, a quarter inch in there. If I can't, then I'll, I'll, I might run a little bit of bead glue or have a little bit of an overlap. Ooh, I'm getting low. My three go-to sizes are quarter inch, three-eighths and five-eighths. I can pretty much get everything I want accomplished with those. I got a little overlap, but that's fine. Not too much. Okay, so the other thing I like to do when I'm installing this is I take the center pieces out, get it straight to the spine, you know, check my margins, and then lay down the center and then come back and take strips off as I go. It, otherwise, you're trying to handle a whole lot of very tacky adhesive. And uh, trying to lift off two strips, if you don't have it straight, is one thing. Trying to lift off this whole panel is quite another. And you might have one of the edges grab before you're ready. Um, burnishing, make sure that the tape is actually adhered to the paper and will give you a lot of relief when trying to pull the backing off by not wanting to pull forward the tape at the same time. And it'll also um, help you when you're once you're done and adding it to your spine, you don't have to work so hard to burnish it onto the spine itself <clears throat> because the first half to the paper that you're applying is already done. Okay, that is the back, here's the front. And again, that's about my 45 degree angle right there. So I'm gonna stand it up and that's what I'm gonna be working with. Of course, it doesn't wanna stand for me. So there'll be, this is almost where you need a third hand. There'll be a lot of maneuvering. You guys will have to uh, be patient with me because I'll be holding the paper and the book at the same time. Okay. I'm going to release the, t the three center pieces of tape. Okay. And I have to stand up. I don't know why, it just makes me more comfortable. I'm gonna turn it to the side because I wanna see um, left and right. If you feel more comfortable adding glue, you can do that right now. And that gives you some time to maneuver the tape. So I'm, it's hard to see. I'm looking for these to be even. Also, if for whatever reason your first panels didn't go in straight, um, you might see it now. And instead of having um, the color blocking, you may opt to overlap to hide 
the, the fact that your first panels didn't go in straight. And that looks pretty darn good. I'm pretty happy with that. So it's a little to this end, but it's lining up with these papers beautifully, so I have no issues with that. Now I'm gonna go side to side and remove the tape and finish laying this down. And as you can see, there's really no space here when it's flat, but when you go and turn it on its side, you're gonna have a little bit of a gap. That is the nature. This is just tedious. Remember, before you lay your tape down, put it back on that 45 degree angle. Also, if you wind up with a gap that's larger than you're comfortable with, just put another decorative strip there. Or a piece of ribbon. I mean, there's lots of ways to um, resolve it if you're not happy with the way it looks. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and take the quarter inch one off too because it was a slight overlap. I don't know why I try to use my nails. It's just, it's a mistake. <laughs> okay, getting into my 45 degree. This is where it matters the most. As you're coming around. To meet the other side of your book. Okay. Oh. Huh. Oh, there's one more piece of I'm like, why isn't that sticking? Because there's one more piece of tape to be removed. Okay, and we're the same process. We're gonna repeat it on the other side. I'm actually gonna wait to push that in place until I get some of this tape down. Don't do this when you're tired, you'll get frustrated. It's not hard, it's just tedious. The heat from your hand will help the fibers align um, the way you want them to. Okay, there we go. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the cover. And you can see this is not quite straight right here. I've got a little bit bigger gap than I do here. So I don't know if that's gonna bother me or not, but if it does, what I'm gonna do is cut a gold piece of paper not that one, a solid one, and just put a strip here. But I also may just add something decorative to take away from me zoning in on that. And there'll also be something over here as well. So as, as I mentioned, this is gonna fit inside the tent, so I am gonna add some embellishments, but they're going to be flat, so they don't interfere with anything that's already inside the tent on the tent walls. So that's it. So here is our six and a quarter by six and a quarter album that's gonna fit right inside of our tent. It's kind of fun. It feels really good in my hands. Um, it's just very blocky. I kind of like it. Um, oops. I saw only three three hinges. I was like, what did I do here? <laughs> it was just folded over. Okay, when I get back, we will continue working on the album. Um, we'll finish decorating the cover and install the pages. I, I like to um, install the pages before I finish up the cover because I don't want to add any additional wear and tear to the cover while I'm messing around with getting the pages inside. Okay, I'll be back soon, you guys. Hey, it's time to wrap this project up. We're going to install the pages, and then we're going to be done with this album. So I just made sure I had everything in order. So this is page one. This project came together so quickly. Sorry about that. There we go. There we go. Okay. Pick that up.
Okay, what happened to the pick tool? Oh, I threw it in the trash. <laughs> I do that at least once every album. It goes in with the backing of the tape. There we go. Okay, you guys. I am going to create a couple more inserts for the front and back since I have paper. I'm going to put some large um, bifold inserts in here. And um, and then the next, oh, I need to line this. The next time we get together, um, I'll do the walkthrough and I'll share with you, and you can see. I was able to line the front and the back of these, and I'll show you the uh, inserts that I've made with um, the remaining paper. Okay, be back soon.